Hey, it's John from Tinderbox Arts. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to bleed or flush a brake system on your motorcycle. Now, bleeding or flushing a system on a motorcycle, brake system on a motorcycle, is essentially the same operation. The reason you would want to bleed a system would be that air has uh, gotten into the brake system. Brake systems are hydraulically operated, so they have a fluid inside. Usually, you have a master cylinder up top uh, somewhere, and then you have down here a caliper which is basically a housing with a piston in it and in between the two you have tubing which contains the brake fluid now uh, a fluid is not compressible in other words if you try to compress a fluid you're not going to get very far air on the other hand does compress so if you get air into a hydraulic system you got a problem because it won't operate uh, at peak efficiency because that air will, will want to um, compress so when you're trying to squeeze a brake lever, that air could compress in there and you're not going to get maximum efficiency out of your braking system. So that's why you would want to bleed a system. If you replace a caliper, uh, you replace you know, any component in a brake system, you're going to introduce air into the system and that all needs to be bled out. And as a matter of fact, just normal operation, uh, you can get some air in a system under certain, certain circumstances. So um, occasionally you may need to bleed some air out of a system. Now, why would you want to flush a brake system? Well, every couple of years or so, it's a good idea to flush uh, the brake fluid out of a system and get clean fluid in there. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. One thing is uh, brake fluid is hygroscopic, meaning that it attracts moisture from the air. Um, and as moisture gets in there, it can corrode some of the brake system parts. So every once in a while, it's a good idea just to flush the system out and make sure any moisture or, or water that got in there is flushed out. Another reason is that you can get dirt and particles inside uh, the system, believe it or not. That can come from a, a number of different sources. For one thing, some of the rubber seals in there can start to break down a little bit, and you may get real tiny particles of rubber in there. For another thing, if as you use your brake system, um, the calipers in their operation, you're going to have a piston in there, and that piston uh, can get some corrosion or dirt on the outside, and sometimes that uh, corrosion, rust, dirt on the outside can make its way in as the piston comes all the way out, especially as your brake pads wear. Um, and then you may replace your pads and push the piston back in. So some of that dirt and rust and corrosion can work its way into the system. So that can become a problem because it impedes the operation of the piston. Or if you have anti-lock brake systems, um, there is uh, you know, a pump that, that is sensitive to getting dirt and things in it. So you want to flush out those tiny particles whenever you can, when you have the chance. A third reason relates to temperature. So as you're using the brake system, especially if you have some you know, real hard stops, um, right here on the rotor and the brake pads, that's going to generate a lot of heat, and that heat will get transferred to the caliper, and that tends to break down the brake fluid, as it were, for all these reasons, it's a good idea every couple of years or so to flush the brake fluid out and, and start with a, a fresh system. Now, our demonstration bike today is going to be a BMW R1200RT, so we'll get into the details of that. But before we do, I just want to just give you a rundown of what major components look like on some other different bikes here. So I got two other bikes here. They're both Triumphs, actually, but they're very similar uh, as far as a lot of bikes. And you're always going to have a master cylinder up top. Now this is for the front brake. So you can have a master cylinder, you can have tubing leading from that master cylinder, and it leads down, as we just showed, down to a caliper. That's what this is. There's a piston or two pistons sometimes in the caliper, um, and then you have brake pads and you have a rotor. The rear brakes also have their own master cylinder. Now, the rear brake master cylinder is typically located you know, behind a cover here, under a seat somewhere, but there's going to be a second one. And that, assuming you have disc brakes, let me get to the other side here. Assuming you have disc brakes, you're also going to have a caliper down here and another rotor, of course. Now, older bikes may have drum brakes uh, for the rear, but still you need a master cylinder for dedicated master cylinder for the rear brakes as well. Now here's another bike. This is a Triumph Tiger. The master cylinder may have a different shape or form to it, but it's the same idea. So you're going to have a master cylinder up top and you're going to have, in this case, um, a, 
a caliper here and a caliper on the other side, you can see through the spokes there. So some bikes have two rotors like this one does. The BMW has the same thing, but they're gonna share the master cylinder for the front. And again, on the rear, you'll have a separate master cylinder. So here in the BMW, you got the master cylinder up top. In the front, you have, in this case, a caliper on each side. So you have, you know, two rotors and two calipers on the front. And on the rear, I have the seat taken off here. Here's the master cylinder for the rear. I'll get a side shot there, all right? So that's right here. And you have a rear caliper. Now, one thing we're gonna be looking at here is the bleeder. So all the calipers are gonna have some kind of, I mean, it may look a little bit different here and there, but something like this, a device, usually has a rubber cap on it. Let me take that cap off. And this is a bleeder valve right here. So it basically has a place for the wrench to go right here. And hopefully you can see that, I hope. Uh, there's a hole on top here. So this is hollow inside. And this bleeder valve allows the fluid to escape. We're always going to bleed or flush the brakes from the bottom or the lowest part, I guess is what I should say, uh, of the caliper in this case. And so we're going to find that bleeder valve. Now, some bikes will have bleeder valves located in other areas. For example, on this BMW, there is a bleeder valve up top here by the master cylinder. Um, get that off. So it's a little tiny valve right here. That's designed to allow you, so you could replace this master cylinder, for example, if you needed to, and you would have an area to bleed air from here before you got to the rest of the system. That's a handy thing to have, but it's not strictly necessary in most cases. So for flushing or bleeding, generally, in other words, once you have a working system, generally you're gonna pick the lowest point. Now, one other complicating factor is that some motorcycles have anti-lock brakes. Anti-lock brakes have a, a separate pump and some electronics associated with it. And that electric pump has some fluid in it which you know you might argue needs to be flushed as well. Now the type of brake fluid you use is important. You have to look at the owner's, owner's manual or very often the um, cap on the master cylinder will tell you what type of fluid you need to use. The two most common are gonna be dot three or dot four, all right? But you can't mix them or match them there, even though <laughs> I know there is one that's sold as dot three and four, uh, which is confusing. But Honestly, just buy the one that's appropriate for your bike. That's the best thing to do. Now, for tools that you need, most of it is nothing special. You're going to need a box wrench um, to get over this bleeder valve, okay, um, and to loosen that. You're going to need maybe a, a screwdriver or, another, or a Torx wrench or something like that to open the top of the master cylinder. And that's really about it as far as hand tools. Now there is one specialty tool that you may want to get. I'm going to demonstrate this. You don't necessarily have to use it, but it's, it's nice to have. And that's one of these um, vacuum pumps here. Basically, I'm going to show you this, but the way they work is it sucks out the fluid um, and ends up you know, putting it into this cup here. And it's a really convenient way of doing uh, bleeding or flushing when you're working alone. Now, if you have a helper, you don't really need this, but um, it's not very expensive. They're about $35. So, um, you know, it's something you might consider getting if you're going to be maintaining your bike or other vehicles. The other thing I highly recommend you get is a length of vinyl tubing. So it's clear vinyl. And what we're going to do is slip this tubing over that bleeder valve. And this will accomplish two things. One, it will allow us to see the fluid come out when we uh, bleed. And it'll also allow us to see any air bubbles that are in the fluid, or dirt for that matter. And the other thing it accomplishes is to seal off that uh, bleeder valve so that um, no air gets into the system as we're doing this process. All right, first let's talk about manual bleeding. By that I mean I'm not going to use that vacuum pump. I'm just going to use, um, if I have a helper, somebody to push the brake pedal down. In this case, we're working on the rear brake, so the pedal down. Um, or if you can reach it with your hand and, and do this process with the other hand, uh, you can do it alone. But it, it gets kind of, it's kind of a pain trying to do it alone. But I am alone here, so I'm going to show you. So the setup here for the caliper side, whether this is front or rear, same thing. We're going to find that bleeder screw, okay? Take the cap off, take that rubber cap off, all right? 
Then we find the right size wrench. In this case, it's a eight millimeter. We're gonna slip that over and get that. I'm, notice I'm using the box end. I really don't, don't use the uh, open end. Use the box end because if you screw up this bleeder screw, it's, it's a pain to get a replacement. So I'm using the box end over uh, the hex there, and then I'm using this vinyl tubing, and I'm just going to, it's, the size of the tubing is going to vary depending on your bleeder valve, but you want to find something that's pretty tight, so this one fits pretty tight on there. So I actually have to, you know, kind of wiggle it on there. All right, so now um, I have a tight, airtight seal here. I have my wrench here so I can open and close that uh, screw. The bleeder screw and when I open it fluid is going to come out once it's under pressure but I need to put that under pressure so how do I do that well I either reach with my arm if it's long enough and it, I'm not sure it is uh, for the pedal in this case or if it's the front brakes I'll reach with my arm for the lever and then with my other arm I need to loosen this long enough to let some fluid out and then close it back up before I release the pedal or the lever. So that's why it's easier with somebody to help because you can have somebody working the pedal or the lever while you work this part. Now the other end of that tubing is going to go into a cup or a bottle or whatever. Actually an old water bottle is, is ideal. I don't have one right now, but something to hold the brake fluid because we're going to go through a fair amount of it. Now brake fluid can eat paint. So you got to be careful with this stuff. Keep a rag on hand. Um, if you, you know, squirt any of this brake, brake fluid on a painted surface, wipe it off quickly. Don't let it sit there because it will eat right through it. Now, since we're starting with the rear brake first, uh, here's the rear brake cylinder. It's kind of a zip tie in the way there. And I'll loosen this cap again, being careful not to drip any brake fluid anywhere. And this is the cap. In this case, there's a little rubber gasket here, which is stuck in there. Be careful when I take that out so I don't spray brake fluid. All right, I'm going to put that aside shortly here. But first thing I do when I open up the brake cylinder is to look on the bottom there, and I don't want to see a lot of debris on the bottom there. Sometimes you see little black particles down there, which could be rust or corrosion or um, bits of rubber from the seals. So in this case, it looks pretty clean. We're going to be careful when we start bleeding this system, we never want to have this master cylinder run dry because that would introduce air into the system. So as we bleed, we're going to check this master cylinder, add a little fluid as it starts to get low, keep bleeding, add a little more, and so on. Okay, our setup is complete. I got my wrench here, got my vinyl tubing on there. I'm going to try to reach with my right hand to the pedal. I'm not sure you'll even see that on camera. And what you want to do is I'm going to push that pedal down a few times just to build up some pressure. I'm going to push this pedal down with my hand and hold the pedal down as if I was braking. With the pedal held down, I'm going to loosen this and you see that fluid come out, okay? Now, the pedal is going to drop. I'm going to close this before the pedal drops. And I actually did see a little bit of an air bubble in there. So the, the whole cycle is I push the pedal down hold the pedal down, loosen the valve, the pedal goes down all the way, I close the valve. So now I let the pedal up, it drops. One, two, three, it drops. One, two, three, it drops. And I'm not seeing any air in here, which is good. One, two, three, it drops. I close it. One, two, three, it drops. I close it. Now, I did notice that the fluid is getting a little clearer, meaning I'm getting fluid from the uh, upper section rather than fluid from the uh, caliper itself, which tends to be dirtier. Now, I'm just going to look up top here, check my master cylinder, make sure I have enough fluid in there. I am getting a little bit low. So I'm going to add some brake fluid from the can here carefully. Okay, now I've topped off the master cylinder. We'll do this process again. One, two, three in the pedal. Let's them out. Let's them out. And it is definitely getting clearer.
All right, how do you know when you're done? Well, I usually put in enough to go through what I think is the caliper and the tubing, and that's usually two or sometimes three master cylinders worth, generally, but it can, you know, it can vary. So once you're sure that you don't see any more air coming through in here, it's a clear fluid, you know, like it looks like it's directly from the can, then you're about done. So that's the manual method. Now, when you release um, this tubing here, I always have a rag handy because when you pull this out, some brake fluid's gonna come out, and again, you wanna avoid getting that on any paint. So just be careful taking this tube off, and then, uh, there. And then just let that empty into the cup, and you're done. Make sure you put that little um, rubber boot on top of this again to keep the dirt out of the bleeder. And that's basically it, super easy. All right, for the front uh, bleeding here, or flushing, I put a rag down underneath the master cylinder here. Here's the front master cylinder. I'm just gonna use a Torx wrench to loosen this cap off, and we'll get that loose. Now remember, front as in rear, we're gonna have this cap loose, but make sure you put the cap back on loosely as you're bleeding the brakes, because you don't want any of this fluid spilling on the paint. All right, with the cap off here, take a look in there, and make sure there's no major deposits, it looks pretty good. Remember this fluid level can vary. So if you replace the pads, for example, um, you know, as the pads wear, the fluid's gonna go down, but you push that piston back in to put new pads on, and you know, the fluid level is gonna come back up. So always take a look at this level here. All right, so here's the setup for this vacuum pump that I'm gonna talk about now, all right? Same idea, you have the wrench already on the uh, bleeder screw, you have vinyl tubing, on top of that, and so that'll seal that from air. The vinyl tubing comes down to a cup, all right, with an inlet and an outlet. Uh, and so the fluid will end up coming in here. On this side, I've attached this vacuum pump. What happens is when I activate that vacuum pump, the fluid will come in this tube and empty into the cup, but the air will come out the exit here. And the way this thing works, basically, that gauge is probably off, so don't pay attention to that, but basically I'm just gonna squeeze this with my hand. That'll create a vacuum, and the gauge will tell you that there is a vacuum there. It may leak a little bit, like this one's leaking down a little bit, not a big deal. As long as you keep some vacuum on there, what's gonna happen is when I open that bleeder screw, as long as I keep the vacuum going, the, the uh, fluid's gonna come out. So I don't need another person. I don't need to pump the pedal or squeeze a lever. Uh, all I have to do is open up that top uh, cover of the master cylinder, keep this vacuum going, and the fluid will come out. All right, I'm gonna try to get this all on camera. I'm not how, sure how successful I'll be, but um, so I'm gonna pump up some vacuum. All right, so now I have some vacuum. I'm just gonna keep watching that gauge. I'll crack open the bleeder, and you'll see that fluid pour out. So as long as I keep some vacuum on there, I'm good. Now, I don't want to go too far, because um, you know, I'll drain the master cylinder, so I'll, keep, I'll close that back up now. Now, you see some air coming, air bubbles coming through here. Uh, don't freak out about that, because basically, there's enough vacuum on here that it's sucking air past the seal of the vinyl tubing. So for newbie, you might get freaked out and think there's a lot of air in there, but there probably isn't. So here's a little bit closer view here. I'll open up the bleeder. So that's open right now. You see there's no bubbles there. And you can see the fluid starting to go there just from gravity. Um, which, and by the way, gravity feed is another way of doing this, although it's a lot slower. I see one little tiny bubble there, but I think that's left over. Now I'm just gonna apply a little bit of vacuum that's a little bit of vacuum, and you do see some bubbles coming in, but I, if I squeeze this off, yeah, I'm not sure I can demonstrate that for you, but just don't be freaked out by this because it's probably from the vinyl tubing. Now, if I take the vacuum off, that's taking the vacuum off, so now there's no pressure on the system. And again, you see the bubbles disappear. That's because I'm not sucking air past that seal. So there's no problem with the caliper or the internal system here. There's no air coming from that. It's just from this seal right here. All right, so we're gonna continue this and make sure I get all the fluid out, because in this case I am flushing, not bleeding. 
Um, so I'm, I'm going to pump up some vacuum, just suck all that stuff out. And you can see the cup is starting to fill here. And just be careful you don't drain that master cylinder. I should also mention how this thing works. You know, this pumping action creates vacuum. But if you want to release the vacuum, this little lever right here will release it. All right, so on this bike, the front has two discs. So I'm going to do this side, and then I'll do the other side. Now we need to talk about the uh, ABS. Now, if your bike is equipped with ABS, there's a pump involved, as we talked about. And now would be the time to get the fluid out of that pump. Now, there's a whole bunch of controversy about this. So most ABS pumps um, have a certain amount of brake fluid that are going to be not stored in there, but uh, kind of a reservoir or a certain amount that's going to be in that pump. And if you bleed or flush your brakes, not all of that fluid is going to come out. Some of it will remain in the pump. So is it a problem? You know, for most bikes, it really isn't. It's a minuscule amount, um, and, the, and in the course of using your brakes, um, that fluid will end up mixing with the rest of the fluid that you've just changed. So a certain amount, you know, it's kind of like a few drops in an ocean kind of thing. You know, some of that fluid that's remaining in the ABS pump will come out in normal operation and get mixed with the new stuff, and it'll be fine. It's not that big a deal. However, there are some bikes, like early BMWs, for example, that have had trouble with ABS pumps as far as corrosion, um, and it could be expensive to fix. So on those sorts of bikes, it probably is important to cycle the pump um, and get that fluid out of there so that all of the fluid in the system is changed. Well, how do you cycle the pump? Well, in most cases, you're going to need a specialized electronic device that connects to the computer, and the computer will order that pump to cycle power, um, and that will get the fluid mixed in with the new stuff, and you can get all of it out. So on this particular bike, it's a BMW, there's a device called a GS911. Uh, that device can cycle the pump manually for you. In other words, you can order the pump to cycle. All right, I, for this bike, I have this software set up here just to show you. And I, I won't bore you with all the major details here, but what you're after is pump motor activation, in this case it's called. And you just want to you know, cycle power on that thing so the fluid will get out. So if I start this, and now I can hear the pump going, it's going to do it a few times. I'm not sure that's coming through on camera, but I can hear it. And that's it. That's all you got to do. So now I've uh, incorporated the fluid that was inside that pump into the rest of the system. Now I can continue bleeding. All right, now we're back to the opposite side. The ABS pump has been cycled. Uh, I got my cup here. I'm going to put a little bit of vacuum, crack this open, and we should see some fluid come out. And there it comes out. All right, so I'm just going to drain that fluid, make sure I get all that stuff out that I can from the ABS pump. And I'm keeping an eye on the master cylinder. Getting a little bit low now, so I'll close that valve. All right, now I'll crack this open again. Now watch, I'm, I'm just going to leave, there's no vacuum on this at all right now. I'm just going to crack this open uh, by gravity. And again, I'm just looking for bubbles there. I don't see any bubbles. It looks good. It is coming out. So now I'm going to put some vacuum on there. The bubbles come, but again, that's just leaking past the vinyl tubing. And I'll probably get another master cylinder's worth of fluid out of this. And that's pretty close there. I'm going to shut that off for a second. I'll release vacuum pressure. Let those air bubbles clear. Now let me open this valve back up and just make sure I don't see any air bubbles. Looks nice and clear. So I can shut this back down and that's it. I have completely flushed the brakes. Now when you put this back together, make sure you have this rubber boot. If you don't have it, make sure you find one to put on there because it is important. Once you start getting dirt and crud and corrosion in this, in this bleeder here, uh, it becomes an issue. So I got that boot back on. One other thing I'm going to mention about bleeders, there is such a thing, uh, it's very popular uh, among car and truck owners, which is speed bleeders. And speed bleeders basically 
it's like a regular uh, bleed screw, but it has a check valve in there, a check ball. And the way that works is it, it only goes one way. So you can squeeze the lever, you can open up the, the bleeder, squeeze the lever, and fluid will come out, but air cannot go back in. Um, those are really great. I've used them a lot on cars and trucks, um, but buying one that fits a motorcycle may be a little hard to find. I've never tried to do it, but it is an option. So you could look at an auto parts store and ask for speed bleeders and see if you can find one that fits if you want to go that route. Last thing I'll mention is that, you know, the master cylinder needs to be filled back up. There's going to be a maximum and a minimum mark. Make sure you're in between there. And just keep in mind, if you have brand new pads or if you have older pads uh, on the brakes, you know, that's going to make a difference as far as fluid level. So pay attention to that. But other than that, you're all set. So you flushed all the fluid out. You're good to go. If you were bleeding, you got all the air out and you're good to go. And that's it. Super easy job.